There are so many serious questions tonight as to why police tasered a 95-year-old with dementia in her aged care bedroom. The 5'2 grandmother, on a walking frame, had a knife. Claire Noland, known for her years of volunteer work, is tonight fighting to live. To me, I can't see how she'd be a danger or threat to anybody. Very Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Claire Noland, 95 years old, on a walking frame, suffering dementia. But armed with a serrated steak knife, a police officer deemed her a threat. I can't transport myself into the mind of the actual officer. It happened at the Yalambi Lodge nursing home in Cooma in the New South Wales Snowy Mountains just after 4am on Wednesday. Negotiations commenced with Claire to essentially drop the knife. Police body-worn video cameras captured the disturbing moment a senior constable with 12 years experience discharged his taser. It is confronting footage. The grandmother collapsed to the floor. Today, she's fighting for her life in hospital with a fractured skull and a brain bleed. Is that, is that, is, can I just ask, please? Assistant Commissioner Peter Cotter faced a barrage of questions. We, the police, treat this matter with extreme significance. Can you understand the public outrage? We are very concerned about what occurred the other day, and that's why we have the investigation alive that we have at the moment. So many questions. The obvious, why did the officer feel the need to discharge his stun gun? Was there anything else that could have been done to peacefully resolve the situation? I want to highlight personally, and on behalf of the organisation, the care and the empathy and the sympathy we feel for the Nolan family. Kuma locals are demanding answers. Her friend of 40 years, lawyer John Last. Look, you wouldn't get one person, one person, to say an adverse word against her. Kevin Dunn says she's a pillar of the community. She's been just a, almost an heroic figure, I, I would say, and um, just a, a really great person. A critical incident team led by investigators from the Homicide Squad is now looking at exactly what happened. She was approaching police, um, but it is fair to say at, at a slow pace. She had a walking frame, but she had a knife. Claire approached the doorway where the police were, and at that stage, the officer, the one officer, discharged the taser. taser. <laughs> Under government guidelines, tasers can be discharged at a police officer's discretion if reasonably necessary to protect human life, protect an officer in a violent confrontation or who is in danger of being overpowered and to protect from animals. It's not out of the question the police officer who's been stood down could face criminal charges. Any member of the police force is not above the law. How could something like this happen? That's the big question, isn't it? Nicole Lee, President of People with Disability Australia, joins me now. Nicole, appreciate your time. What sort of threat could a 95-year-old grandmother with dementia pose, even if she is carrying a knife? Ultimately, really, anybody the age of 95 carrying a knife really shouldn't be posing much in the way of a threat to, you know, police, you know, knife or, or no knife. Um, so this really begs the question of, you know, what is their training? How is this not filtering down to the people on the ground? And why aren't they doing better? Yeah, I, I think we all get that police officers have to make decisions in really stressful moments, but was this seriously that? And was a taser really the only solution? No, the taser cannot only have been the only solution. So it's really important that, you know, that this kind of practice is stamped out and the police really make some major steps to ensuring that this never happens again, that their officers are trained and that there are people that can be brought in that are 
dedicated to working with people who are distressed. I mean, I think there are a whole bunch of questions here too for the aged care facility. Why are they calling in the cops in the first place? She was alone in her room, so no one else was in danger. And how did she get her hands on a serrated knife? Yes, exactly. What was their training? What was their support? And what are the staffing ratios to be able to manage a situation like this? Because clearly something has majorly failed in this instance. And far too often, as I said, we see the, you know, the instant go-to is to restrain the person versus actually calming the person down and creating an environment where the person you know, may not get as escalated as necessary. In a situation like this, Nicole, rather than call the police, what else could the aged care staff have done? Well, if the aged care staff had the resources and training behind them, they could have worked to reorientate this person back to the, you know, the here and now, reorientate them back to the room, reassure them that they were safe and that they weren't going to be harmed and that they were okay. And these staff should have been given the resources and training to handle somebody like this, or she should not have been in that setting to start with if they weren't capable of working with somebody, you know, with Alzheimer's or dementia. It is such a horrible thing to have happened. Nicole, really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.